It's the triple mega ultrasonic hyperwave Cybertron blasting. Okay, it's just a flashlight holder, but it's pretty cool. Hey everybody, Anthony here, and thanks for watching Crystal Miner Rocks. Today, I'm in my workshop and not in the field. Ever have a lot of UV flashlights but not enough hands? Introducing the AFS 3000. Let me show you how to make it. Just recently, I was up at Graves Mountain in Georgia. Uh, they had their spring day, and there was a bunch of rock hounds that got together informally at a barbecue uh, put on by uh, Bob. And I uh, met a bunch of nice people, some from my club, also uh, the Crystal Collector was there, his, uh, his clubhouse uh, members uh, met them as well. And uh, I met Brianna, who was trading a bunch of fluorescent minerals. So it was her flashlight that I saw for the first time, those three uh, UV ones. And then she had a rig holding them together. I think I only saw it for like 10 seconds before I got like, you know, used by somebody else. There was a, a lot going on at the time. After the event, um, I ordered a set of those UV flashlights. And when they came, uh, I was thinking, you know, I like to tinker. So maybe I can MacGyver something for these guys. Okay, so let's get started with some materials. Um, as you see, my choice is PVC conduit. This is three quarter inch. And um, it, the reason why I started with that is because it fits very well with this uh, bicycle clip uh, for a flashlight holder I happen to have. I got this from Amazon, it comes with these uh, fittings. So this works really well with this size. It also does with half inch, but I decided to try and make it with uh, three quarters. So to end up with this, we're gonna cut it down to size. You're gonna need some uh, conduit cutters and um, a heat gun, something like this. Pretty cheap from Harbor Freight. Um, you definitely need this. Don't use a hair dryer. It's not going to do it. So we're going to we're going to bend this and do the shape we want. Okay, so that was pretty much it. Got two nice bends. Uh, matched it up with my original, which I was happy with. You can always soften it up to wiggle it up or down. Um, so let's mark this guy off. And I don't think it's going to be any longer than the original, so. PVC pipe cutter. Trim it down. There you go. And this guy. We'll need this. This spins open. need these attachments because this is the three-quarter. If you end up using half-inch conduit, you will need that. This guy slips right on. And there's your first one. Right there. Fully adjustable and also articulates if you want to go sideways. So I did decide to paint mine, make him look really spiffy. Um, it will come right off if you're starting to add attachments and parts, which I'll show you one I, I, that I had made. Uh, or if you uh, don't loosen this and just muscle turn it and you know, start adjusting it. So it will do that. However, if you get them exactly where you want and start turning it, it won't, you won't really see where you've scuffed off the paint. Um, so the only thing I've added, uh, actually the only thing I had to buy was tennis grip that I didn't have. Um, so I added it here and here. And in between, I added this uh, linerless uh, electrical tape. It's actually waterproof tape. You can get it from Home Depot. It is number 2242. It's the really thick stuff, and that is definitely what you want to use um, almost as a grip. But I decided I want more padding, so I bought a little string of that. So that's what I added in between here, so that I could um, keep the finish when I add it to my attachments. Okay, we got the uh, backbone made, so let's continue production and bring it to life. Alright, so all the clamps are in place. Pretty much this is the configuration I want right here. 
and um, you know once you kind of get set to how you want it you can actually paint it and once you put the clamps on there just don't just don't muscle move it like this which you know it's fine if it's got no paint on it with the middle finish but uh, otherwise just leave it like that and it'll just the paint will be fine but as soon as you start doing things to it it will take it right off okay let's get the lights on okay here they are all fully assembled check it out these bad boys um, I did put them down just be careful protect the lens this way they're all leveled and that way I can uh, you know just set it down and it'll they're fully balanced I just leave it a little loose while you settle it and then clamp it down and uh, of course I had it at an angle as you see that way when my hands just you know resting off my shoulders this is already tilting to the ground and I can just kind of swivel left and right if I need to go lower I can articulate it down okay I'm gonna show you how it looks like on the stand and the fun continues Does anybody remember this my first DIY video um, I made a magnifier hands-free holder out of a conduit and uh, it's, it's very functional I use it a lot so and um, in keeping with that same format, I have added this guy. So uh, it's a one inch uh, post. Uh, I was gonna use a piece of dowel, but then I saw this and I just cut it up. I uh, fatted it up with the uh, 2242 tape, just so it can sit in there snug, drop it in. And uh, now I have a multifunction base for my flashlights. Got my specimens, works perfect. Another way I hold it now, probably just leave it like this mainly is uh, just this is the way it would sit Just like that. It's very stable. Uh, even though this is very heavy like five pounds I, I would have probably made this a little wider if I had known I was gonna do something like this big instead of uh, you know, just a few ounces <laughs> like this so uh, Very very functional and then uh, now it is a bit low for just uh, doing my specimen So you can do an extension tube. Uh, this is a one and a quarter So I made it about a foot and a half just to raise it up really high drops in like this and this guy slips in there just like that so I'm gonna pull it back so you guys can see how high it is check it out lots of room underneath to move my uh, crystals around so again super functional it's accessory time so I made this like a week ago and I've been having lots of fun thinking about all the different ways I can use it and do different things with it I found that I don't always have my headlamp on and of course it's in the dark so I need a light perfect attachment right there so I took a three-quarter coupler and basically it slips in just like this right in the front and now I've got a light right in the front and because it's the same size it can come off and go on the handle check it out and this actually has a swiveling head so now I've got a downward facing light and I can turn it off, see my specimen, turn it back on if I want to see where I'm going and whatnot. So that is my one and only uh, accessory. It is, um, I don't know, I didn't buy this. Thanks Dave, I'm finally using a flashlight. It's pretty cool. It's, uh, it actually fits into this little car flex. This is a flexible conduit. And it can be glued. Now in this case I didn't need to because by the time I took this and cut a piece out and stuffed it in there, this guy just snugs it goes in there really snug and it won't come out so as you can see it's pretty pretty tight so uh, didn't even need to glue it that's one accessory this is Carflex that might be something you guys might want to add to this if you can find this uh, NIC R01 Nikron uh, flashlight so it's got a single battery in there so that is my one accessory for the flashlight Okay, I got more for you guys. Having fun yet? This is a bicycle grip that I have left over from another project. Um, I actually tried to use this initially because I didn't want to use grips and all that stuff like this, which is what I, I'm really happy with this course. And, but I ended up with this because the bicycle clips is three quarter inch works much better. Um, so then after I was done with this, I went back to here, hmm, what can I do? So uh, it fit the half inch better. That's the only size it will fit. Um, so basically I made it to this point. Um, three quarter inch for the clips added it to a coupler this is a reducer and then later on I'll just glue it all together so now I've got basically another handle perfect and I don't have to deal with any tape so guess what this is it's a magnet why is it there because this wonderful accessory 
to get it out. As a magnet. So, just had to do something with it. There you go. Now I'm not going to thrash it around. It is pretty secure, but if I use it gently, and uh, <laughs> pretty nifty, huh? So this, uh, this I got from Walmart. I don't remember where I got the magnets from. They have a hole in it. Uh, I've had them for a while. So you have to use a flathead uh, screw, okay? It's got the magnets got to make perfect contact with it. So after I um, found a flat piece of PVC, and I, that was what took the longest time. I actually had to carve it out to basically a flat disc. And then I, you know, so that way I can use some PVC glue to glue it to the front like this. Um, make sure you glue the magnet and screw, to, screw it to the disc first, and then you can just place it with the glue onto the uh, front of the conduit. So now, basically, I've got a lot more functionality with this. I don't think I'll do this one, but this is, looks pretty good just for one front downward looking as well. Okay, I've got one more for you guys. This was uh, something I made about a year ago. Um, this is my Convoy Long Wave with a skinny body. And this is a uh, desk lamp with a clamp. And all I did was I removed the, uh, the light bell, as you can see. So here's the lock ring that attached it. I removed it and I've added this uh, right angle piece of aluminum, but you can get like a steel one from like braces from like Home Depot or any hardware place. And I attached this uh, half inch uh, post with the screw and reuse the same bicycle clip so that now I have something that basically it's, it's hands free at a desk. Easy for use on my uh, specimens when I'm checking them out. So that's another something you can make that is pretty handy. You can probably find these old desk lamps uh, you know, at thrift stores and yard sales and stuff. So like I had one that was around for a long time. Now I've moved on to the AFS 3000. So some pretty cool stuff here. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you got something out of it. Find me on Facebook, Crystal Miner Rocks. Um, if you want to share some ideas or anything you've made, I'm sure the group would like to see it. Till then, rock on. See you on the next adventure. Okay, it's demo time. I've got uh, short wave at 255 nanometers, uh, mid wave at 310, long wave at 365. My entire collection has just come to life with all types of colors using these guys. I'm having so much fun. I'm only going to show you three different specimens, one for each wavelength. Uh, it's amazing and they will look different, uh, react differently with each different delight. So amazing, check it out. Beautiful sespartine garnet on an unknown matrix that has a super surprise. Check this out. Beautiful pink tremolin rod and quartz matrix. This little beauty I found near Cadet, Missouri. It's got pockets of light blue druzy quartz. And there's another mineral, uh, I don't know what it is, and this thing is crazy in mid wave, so I'm gonna show you that. It does also glow in short wave, but mid wave is where it's at. Check it out. Check out that green and purple. Is that out of this world or what? Beautiful druzy, slightly smoky quartz with some white barite mixed in from Haunted Ridge in Missouri. Never in my wildest dream did I know it would react in long wave. Check it out.